welcome to EFRM uh, PR and Communication Bridge webinar. And um, just to start off, uh, you know, uh, though the date uh, on the calendar is 8 March to celebrate uh, Women's Day, but if we take a closer look at corporate India, we know that uh, almost every day around the calendar is uh, Women's Day with, uh, you know, women leaders across board uh, in every sector, because from board meetings to sales pitch to, you know, engaging with clients, almost nothing is complete without uh, the magic touch of uh, the corporate leaders we have today in India. So uh, without going much into uh, all of that, I'm, I can't wait to introduce our eclectic mix of panelists. Uh, experts from uh, the PR and uh, communication sector. We have uh, Archana Jain, who's the founder and managing director at PR Pandit. We have uh, Devshikha Dharmaraj, who's the CEO at Genesis BCW. We have with us uh, Valeri Pinto, who is uh, the CEO at Weber Shangwick. We have Rashmi Vashisht, who's the former head of uh, corporate communication and PR at Apple. We have uh, Manisha Chaudhary, who's the founder and director at Value360. We have Pooja Patak, who is uh, MD at Media Mantra. We have uh, Nandita Lakshmanan, who is the CEO at The Price. And Shivani Gupta, who is the MD at SPAC. So uh, we are discussing today about the innovations in times of crisis in the sector and how innovation and creativity can turn crisis into an op opportunity. So we have a couple of questions that we're going to talk about. Basically, it's all going to be around uh, innovation and creativity in the sector and how things are taking a new turn, uh, given the new normal that we have all accepted. Uh, so I'll straight away go into the first questions, you know, uh, which is uh, what agencies and communication experts are doing to bring innovation and creativity in communication at this time. And the second part of the same question is, you know, how communication strategies have changed because our conditions have changed, you know, work atmosphere has changed and so has everything. I'm sure client briefings must have changed. A lot of things have changed uh, given the pandemic and the lockdown that we are in. So what are the kind of strategic changes uh, that have also happened in the sector? We'll start with you, Archana. Thank you, Desme. Thank you, E4M. Um, it's lovely to be sharing this panel with this power packed panel of women leaders. Um, it's, you know, it feels nice to be out there uh, and it feels like, yes, we are getting there. More power to all of us. Um, but coming back to the question, yes, crisis times of this nature really require us to be agile and adapt our communication strategy. Um, I think there is a need for digital storytelling and I think all of us have been adapting to that. Uh, for the kind of brands that we represent, it's been a lot of... Uh, changes in the strategy in terms of saying, okay, you know, it's no longer putting out a lookbook with your fashion uh, merchandise, but it's more talking about how you can work from home with wardrobe suggestions. It's looking at maybe a, a, a sharing a playlist, a curated playlist of enjoying sort of working at home, you know, while staying at home. Uh, considering that eating out is no longer an option, uh, hotels and restaurants are all turning to saying, okay, how can we share cooking lessons with you, right? If you are, let's say, Kaya, which is a skin clinic, then you no longer have customers wanting to come in. So you've got to, still people have problems of skin care that have to be resolved. And so, you know, giving them those uh, sessions via Zooms, consulting sessions, or if a watch brand like IWC is launching a new watch, you know, how is it that AR has come to rescue? And saying, okay, so the media persons can actually put it on their wrist and see, okay, how smart does this watch look apart from the innovations that are being introduced? Uh, you know, brands like Kingfisher, etc. what we've done is we've kind of introduced, they've introduced a new entertainment channel in this, in this entire uh, lockdown phase, in this phase of the pandemic where people are reticent about going out. And that has provided us reasons to go to press and galvanize media. Then contextual uh, issues like domestic violence that have come into the fall, those have been embraced as part of the strategy. So our strategy has got to evolve with what is happening in the marketplace. So if, if you can't go to a hairdresser, then the hairdresser must come to you. So Dyson hair care on how you can do your hair while at home, etc., is all techniques that we've, we've embraced in this. 
even brands like you know automobile brands like lamborghini you know their manufacturers being closed back in italy there is no way that you know what what new launches can we talk about we really can't take anything so we said okay let's get the marketing head to talk about what changes are happening globally they've actually gone ahead and transformed their manufacture to quickly produce personal protection equipment and respiration respirators that has been what we grabbed headlines in times of india for right. you know so it's been a lot of nimble agile efforts to try and draw attention to efforts that make sense if if a gaming uh, laptop brand like msi decides to say okay we are going to we are going to extend the warranty we have to employ our pr machinery behind that and to drive as much footfalls because this is not the time to be out of sight we have to all brands all our clients need to be top of mind because the opportunity for the pr industry is we can provide creative solutions which will be low cost which will also be sensitively addressed across all stakeholders through what is gained more more power in this time of owned conversations yeah absolutely so that's it from me right thank you archana that those were some very interesting insights into uh, what the industry is uh, prepping up for and is doing uh, dipshika uh, tell us a little bit about uh, um, your thoughts on innovations your thoughts on opportunities and you know changing strategies with changing times yeah now uh, what archana spoke about is very interesting and it's lovely to see uh, all the others on this panel two of whom i actually worked with really at the start of my career so it's wonderful to be here thank you uh, creativity i think is about how do you change perceptions how do you question the status quo and how do you transform your business and this is actually a quote which has been said by mark reed more recently when wpp is being given the most creative global agency of the decade and i think that rings very true with me because at the end of the day when we talk of creativity it's not about just having a let's put a interesting idea out there and see what happens the idea has to make a difference and archana cited a lot of examples about how you are changing perceptions and doing things in your business which you've never done before so can the creative communication then enable the brand to go out there and talk to its people and i think we've been doing that very successfully uh, you know we were talking the other day with some of my other colleagues in the communication space and we were laughing and saying you know the amount of work creative innovative work we've probably done in the last 3 months we would have done in a 3 year time span uh, you know where you think of the various things to do you do a lot of research you collect a whole lot of insights and then you ponder over it and you pontificate and then you take 6 months to decide uh, all that was out of the window it was it was do or die it was a point question of survival actually for the communications business so creativity uh, it wasn't a choice let me put it like that i think it was had to do and it's wonderful to see how everybody has stepped up to it whether it's been our clients whether it's been our people uh, we've taken some very interesting ideas to our clients and clients have grabbed it and said okay let's try it so i love the you know the faith and the gumption that has been put uh, behind all those thoughts and ideas and you can see so many of them which have come out whether it's been let's say you let's do an online farewell for a colleague who was going away we were supposed to have done a party uh, like a employee large farewell let's turn it into an online let's have a music session online uh, whether it's about uh, videos i mean audio visual content has become the biggest way to communicate today because unfortunately written content has taken a bit of a beating with publications having to uh, take a break from um, actually publishing a live newspaper so audio visual content has become the king and everybody is today talking about how do you create a quick and dirty video a 1 minute video 3 minute video and that's again lent itself beautifully to creativity and so there's a whole lot of things that people have done so what stands out for me is the speed at which our people have adapted to this change and given it their best in terms of agility and creativity when we look at creativity we always start with the most important thing 
are we meeting some unmet need of the consumer and are we creating some shared value i think those are the two parts we always look at saying that whatever idea we take out there are we going to make a difference so for example when i say unmet need it could be pure simple awareness creation of what should you do as safety norms in the covid space and we've put out a whole lot of content and material out there in that especially in the early parts of the whole lockdown phase on how do you need to be careful social distancing how do you take care of your senior citizens and so on and so forth so there's a lot of content which went out on safety and security in every form so it was a pure simple generate awareness unmet need then we went to a step further from there and said okay people are in lockdown sitting at home this whole thing of feeling stressed out whether it's with too much work whether it's being distance from your workplace or your family so the whole space of mental awareness and uh, taking care of the mental well-being space and there was a lot of work which we did there we uh, we were working with clients who launched helplines we've provided uh, access to support for people who want to have a conversation on her feeling depressed or feeling not okay and to be able to say that it's okay to not be okay i think that was a big big one that we put out there together as a communications industry saying let's pull out those conversations and it's okay not to be okay and let's talk about it and then obviously more recently and even at a global level we've seen this whole bit about equal opportunity gender diversity inclusion whether it's been bame or lgbtq we have been celebrating the pride month uh, all of last week uh, the pride weeks or, or last week so i think those are the other things that have come to fore and here again it's unleashed a whole space of creativity where people have been thinking of how do you get this message out and then we have this larger environment bits with we started out on global warming how do you look at alternative fuels and so on so at every level whether it's been addressing a personal consumer need whether it's being overall at a society level we've been actually addressing what are the issues that people are facing in this time uh, yes i think said to death unprecedented but really it is and how can we as communicators help mitigate some of those concerns and actually get people to uh, adapt people to start not just surviving but now it is a question of thriving so the if the last three months were about how do you survive and how do you sort of keep it together and continue to grow uh, as in continue to at least stay in existence now it is going to be about how do you get stronger how do you grow faster from here and therefore the whole communication focus and creativity innovation is now going to be in in that space so i believe at every stage communications has been there to help brands tell their story and tell it with creativity and innovation and it's going to be just more of that that we will need going forward right deepshika i think uh, you know adding a humanitarian touch to the communication and mixing it with creativity those were some excellent points uh, you made there uh, over to you valerie if you can tell us a little bit about uh, your experiences and your thoughts on innovation and creativity and the kind of uh, strategy changes that you have uh, you know advised to your clients or uh, you know that clients have uh, wanted to take up uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on it valerie i think uh, the situation and uh, it won't be very different from what dipshika or what arjuna has said but uh, i'd like to say that this uh, sort of pandemic has uh, pushed us to be creative in a very um, unique way like uh, dipshika mentioned to, to catapult and to actually just ramp up and uh, make decisions or or look at how you can uh, elicit an action quite quickly instead of procrastinating on whether this is going to work so brand brand guys or customers have been far more riskier in these in these times but um i think there are four four uh, areas that uh, as an industry uh, we have uh, 
we, we need to look at ourselves and innovators. One is how do we, um, in everything that we do, whether it's creativity for a brand, whether it's looking at our organization, how are we solving? Uh, how are we engaging? Um, and uh, how are we opening minds with uh, whatever that we're doing, right? Uh, that's what the what that's what the environment is pushing us to unite around a common purpose, uh, in a sense. The second thing is that um, how do we see the system differently? Um, the same thing that worked pre-COVID uh, won't work post-COVID. So how do we see everything that's happening around us? How do brands see everything that's happening around them differently, and and adapt, imbibe, and, and absorb, and see what they can do to change the way they will look at the environment um, uh, as they move uh, into post-COVID times. The third part is. Um, how do we unfreeze uh, the way we worked? So there are certain rigid ways in which we've been working for a while. And I think this pandemic has forced us to unfreeze our organizations, move out of fixed structures and look at new ways of, uh, so while, while uh, Deepshika spoke about uh, pushing uh, digital content or video content, I mean, there are certain things which all, most of the talent, 80% of the talent were very rigid in the way they they've functioned, um, you know, all these uh, years. And I think the last three months, they've all had to come out of their com comfort zones and unfreeze themselves and unlock a new, um, you know, hidden talent that we found in so many of, of, of the colleagues we work with and like, wow, okay, fine, let's go ahead and do this. The fourth one is, um, I think every uh, campaign or every action um, uh, or every activity that we've done with our clients or internally has to have a strong bias towards action, right? It has to push you to be able to do something, demand a change or pass in the pace of ideation or, or decision making on a certain aspect. So when you go um, with an idea, it goes quickly to the CEO and says, you know, do you think this is something that will work or not? And suddenly we're seeing that they're more engaged in the whole, um, you know, uh, business of communications and they're, they're they're fast pacing a lot of ideation, which have typically gone from a comms person to the marketing person, and then somewhere along the line to the CEO, and then you know we get stuck somewhere in the middle. So I think that's what uh, this uh, pandemic has pushed us uh, to do as an industry and uh, as an organization, and as the way we deal with our clients and uh, our people internally as well. Right, right, Valerie. So. Like you rightly mentioned, and you know, whatever worked before uh, the pandemic took off will definitely not work uh, through the lockdown and even uh, post uh, this crisis is over. And you know, that is where the role of uh, innovation comes in. So, uh, you know, Rashmi, uh, we'd like to hear from you, uh, you know, your thoughts on how uh, things are changing, how communication is changing, and how is innovation and uh, creativity, you know also uh, making an opportunity uh, for those in the sector, you know, and uh, what are the change in strategies that you are suggesting are, uh, that you think works uh, best at this time when we are all in a crisis, when corporate India is in a crisis, when that, uh, there is global crisis actually. So, you know, uh, what are your suggestions on it? Um, okay, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And I'm just really so glad to be a part of this fabulous panel. And of course, I agree with all my esteemed colleagues that, you know, communications is changing fundamentally at this time. I think one of the key questions brands are asking is how do we support the business with you know, creative uh, communications to reach um, the key audience in new ways? And they're also asking how do we give our audience a real life experience of our brand, our product? you know, without the advantage of physical presence. So this is where we're seeing a big upturn in usage of creative technologies, um, virtualized environments. For example, um, you know, live streaming of product launches. There are online 3D tours of destinations and experiences, cloud exhibitions. There's been very smart usage of uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, social networking is definitely through the roof. We've seen the importance of Instagram, which has grown exponentially. And as you know, Valerie um, uh, and Archana have talked about, there's really a big focus on 
creative content and, and brands are turning to videos, shorter, smarter, and, and more compelling videos. And, and, and these changes are here to stay. Um, I think another focus is that uh, the brand focus is, you know, we have to become more relevant to communities. Um, we're there to help solve problems um, and on making a difference. So storytelling has to change to align with this business goal where brands become purpose driven, but they also become relevant. <clears throat> so for example, instead there's a big shift. Instead of telling a story about you know, a product, it's USBs, um, there's a focus on building a narrative around its benefits or its values. I mean, is it sustainable? Is it environmentally friendly? Is it protecting your privacy? So values that the brand uh, product stands for, and I think most important, how it can transform lives. Um, this, we've all seen this change in tonality because these are trying times and, and uh, you know, the approach is uh, very compassionate, it's caring. Um, so the three words that actually come to my mind is this, this renewed focus. But there is a focus on being authentic, being accurate, um, and credible, credible. So, and my other thought, which I also wanted to talk about a little bit, is that, you know, in all innovation programs, whether it's internal or it's external, good things can happen only by listening and valuing other perspectives. So we're letting data, insights, and analytics be the guide more than ever before, because many brands will have to go through a new cycle of listening to their consumers, understanding, you know, what has changed? What do consumers want now? Um, and these insights have to inform uh, communication strategies. And, and they also have to be used to understand how the innovations and the creativity in communication strategies um, are impacting uh, the business overall. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rashmi, for your insights. And, you know, uh, moving over to the next set of questions that we have, our webinar today is uh, reflective of how most of corporate India is working at the moment. You know, work from home is the new normal uh, that we all have accepted. Companies have, and we are... Uh, planning our schedules accordingly, planning our meetings accordingly. And, you know, the entire work pattern has changed, logging in, logging out patterns, timings, everything has changed. So, you know, what is interesting to learn from uh, you today is that how is productivity um, also changing um, during uh, this work from home pattern? If at all it is uh, getting hampered or, you know, if productivity has gone up, so uh, we'd love to know your views on that. And, um, you know, also communication, like most of you would agree, is about efficiency and effectiveness, right? So if uh, that has seen any change at all in terms uh, of, you know, the new normal that we are all settling in uh, with. So, uh, you know, Manisha, if you could um, uh, start uh, with those questions, if you can uh, tell us a little bit about uh, work from home and, how everybody is adjusting uh, to this uh, new work pattern and about effectivity and innovation also happening at this time. So uh, thanks for having me here. I'm very excited to be part of this uh, Women All panel. So answering to your question, um, it's been more than 100 days of uh, working from home. And to be very honest, I have not seen uh, any issue with the productivity so far. Uh, a lot of initiatives have been taken from our level to ensure that team is uh, comfortable working from home. For example, uh, the moment it was announced, various measures were taken. We quickly introduced the available technology and integrated with our operations to ensure that there's smooth operation, smooth functioning of our operations. A lot of uh, tech assistance was also given to people, those who were not equipped with their tools to work from home for a longer period. Along with that, We've also taken a lot of initiatives to give proper leaves to our employees. We are pushing them to have one week leaves on rotational basis. Gaming is very popular in our uh, organization. So a lot of gaming championships we keep organizing. So all these efforts uh, we are doing to ensure that the productivity level should not go down. However, it's been three months 
and i feel that the lines are blurring between uh, personal and professional time and uh, pandemic fatigue might set in and it can impact the productivity in near future so we are also um, you know guiding our team leaders to be supportive and sensitive towards their team so all these initiatives uh, we are taken uh, uh, we are forcing their productivity might go down so we are taking all these initiatives at our level and for being effective and efficient as you mentioned i think um, this is a very difficult situation people are facing it in their own unique ways so and this is definitely has become a new normal for us so i would just like to add few points here to be effective in this point uh try to follow a routine uh which you would have done in a normal uh, you know scenario however even if still you're not able to do it don't be harsh on yourself the work can be done any time the other day be very engaged and uh, it's very important to be engaged and supportive with each other at this point of time and uh, also uh, please don't uh, you know uh, stop taking your leaves plan your vacations use that time to unwind yourself and the most important which we have we always tell to our team members that it's very important to unplug multiple times during the day it is not important for you to be available you know uh, on the screen uh, for 20, 10 to 12 hours a day or to available on phone uh, yeah so uh, uh, this is from my end right right so i think that uh, you know we need more bosses like manisha where you're introducing gaming uh, for your employees you know that that's the kind of things uh, that are happening you know to keep the morale up of the employees and you know that also increases uh, your productivity your faith in the organization that you are working and i'm sure all that is reflected in the work that is coming up um and over to you pooja what are your thoughts on you know work from home the new normal and uh, efficiency and effectiveness of communication at this time yeah so thank you so much for having me at the panel i think uh, you know i think manisha has rightly said about uh, the pandemic fatigue and how there are different ways of dealing with things yes these are very empathetic times and it requires a humanitarian touch that is definitely de- there following discipline and following uh, some pattern of uh, you know professional and personal gap is very important but at the same time you know uh, taking that mindful pause is equally important so when i talk about mindful pause it means that you know after every say 45 minutes or maybe after every 60 minutes if you take that 10 minute break in that you know we encourage people to talk to each other talk to each other and you know like uh, you know have that conversation thing going and there are a lot of you know friday virtual sessions in which we are just generally talking and maybe our uh, drinks have also gone a little virtual now so people are enjoying that phase of uh, having virtual drink session so i think these are these are uh, times that you know you need to talk a lot to your people and uh, once you are talking then there is a sense of understanding that you get from you know how their sentiment is actually growing so i think uh, these are some ways in which you know you have to create some kind of discipline once you do not start your day well you of course get a little uh, agitated entire day and there is no pattern of routine that you follow so having a discipline is equally important and you need to start early and of course end your schedules on the respective timelines you can't merge timelines and you know have your work schedules running into your personal routines as well so some kind of timelines need to be maintained and yes uh, people uh, are in that uh, in the in that uh, swing that they require a right kind of uh, you know a uh, uh, mindfulness activity and we do some sessions uh, as well in the organization and have been asking you know like uh, teams to come up with their own ideas also how they are doing things differently so i think uh, everybody is doing their own way of uh, how they can creatively manage the situation but yes uh, these are uh, some of the things i think all of us are doing it and we have to continue doing that for sure right right so over to you nandita nandita you are clearly in office and we know we are not working from home but i'm sure you uh, you and your entire team have also been through several days of uh, work from home and you must have noticed uh, changes in patterns changes in uh, work life balance and everything that tags along with the uh, work from home situation so if you can tell us a little bit about you know the kind of uh, changes that you have seen in your team in your client briefs and you know how has productivity been um, impacted uh, during uh, 
the lockdown if at all it has been impacted in a negative way and uh, your take on uh, efficiency and effectiveness uh thanks tasmai um so yeah it's just a bangalore office that is open and it's completely voluntary for anyone who wants to come in and work um i've just chosen to come to office uh, and work um you know i have a um um i think about work life balance in a very different way i talk more about um, i mean i I've, i've never known work life balance but i've known what i've known as rhythm um uh, you know and as long as i find my life in a rhythm uh you know i i'm fine and sometimes that rhythm comes from just spending time at home family friends etc that rhythm comes with you know one foot at work and one foot at uh, uh you know in with the family or it could just be completely work and i think right now um it's a it's a good rhythm with just i think almost 80% of my time devoted to work uh, and i think that i can say that of my colleagues as well you know right. i've always said that if i try and find if we try and find work life balance in these times uh, we're always going to kill ourselves and say you know what a terrible life we're leading but if we focus on the rhythm you know and we say that yes this is going well um i think we're going to be a lot more positive about what we're going through and i think when i talk of rhythm uh, and you speak about productivity that's my um i think you know we've i thought somebody else mentioned it was it valerie or someone who said that we've never seen a more or deep more productive time than the last 100 days you know um if you look at where our clients are uh, the the kind of uh, you know acknowledgement from the client side on the great work that the team's doing internal camaraderie uh whether it is um you know just everyone doing what they have to without anyone breathing down their necks and i do find that a lot of our senior managers times have been released because we're not checking on who's doing what work is just getting done and isn't that beautiful like i say that you know we had three destinations delhi mumbai bangalore today we have 85 destinations we're working out of 85 places and things have never been more seamless things have never been more coordinated you know and i think that's that is what i say i think productivity has been at an all time high but yes we are tired uh but i would like to say and i hope i talk about everyone i think we're happily tired because i i know that the work that we're doing is really really good so you know i and this has made me actually pause and think about what you really need for productivity um you need clear objectives and very clear timelines to deliver you need a supportive team you need an encouraging client you need agility in response you need constant communication and feedback you need a good working infrastructure you need to have an environment and a mind space that is free of fear and anxiety you know i think there are a lot more of these things um and i think every organization is are doing these things better than ever uh so uh you know and i and therefore i really feel uh, when i look at productivity i'm very happy um and i i just hope that but yes you know we always talk uh, you know manisha spoke about it pooja spoke about it it's very important to keep in mind that burnout is um is 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 you know is possible at any time uh, mm-hmm. need to watch out for that but i think we're all doing that right now coming to the next point on effectiveness and efficiency i am a proponent for both i don't think it can be one on a you know compromise for the other having said that in the last 100 days i put effectiveness way ahead of efficiency um we're all living i think we're all possibly putting in 10 or 12 hour days and you know as um and i can speak for um the the women uh you know the uh, uh women in the workforce uh we're also primary caregivers at home even now despite our uh, you know uh, despite all that we do at work uh, we're still primary caregivers at home so it's pretty much a i would say 20 hour work schedule which is grueling you know so we need to cut ourselves some slack when it comes to efficiencies and i'm very glad here that i've also seen some clients cut us some slack for efficiency 
uh, you know, kind of forego some of the rigid systems and processes that need to be followed from a reporting perspective, etc., to focus at, as to what really brings in uh, outcomes. And I think that's very important. Focus should be on outcome. Um, you know, it's, it's not about how many hours we are putting in or et cetera. It's about are we delivering what we have to at this time? So it's so important to look at what you're doing and just filter out all the unnecessary good to do things, right? Um, and just focus on what is absolutely necessary. Um, if you can be efficiently effective, nothing like it, but, uh, but I think uh, effective uh, trumps efficiency at this point in time for me. Right, right. I think that's a very beautifully put, uh, you know, we have like in all bullet points that what all drives um, efficiency and productivity during this time uh, of the crisis. So over to you, Shivani, we have talked about uh, seamlessness uh, and coordination and um, everything that comes to our mind when we uh, talk about, you know, working from home. So uh, how has it been different from you? How has working from home been different for you and your team? Uh, how has the productivity been, uh, both, you know, internally with your team and with clients? And if you can also tell us your thoughts on uh, efficiency and effectiveness of communication at this time. Thank you, Tasme. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, when we talk about um, communication and we talk about creativity, so creativity is not just now in the campaigns and external communication. Now we are talking about at this point in time, creativity. Uh, in internal communication, which is with the employees, how much can we kind of support them? How much uh, is it that we can help them to kind of withstand this and, you know, uh, fight it in a better way? So, yeah, it's uh, very important for uh, all of us to understand that uh, there has to be a right balance uh, between the EQ and the IQ. So uh, for... Uh, everybody to understand the balance in terms of the emotional quotient and the intelligent quotient, quotient, you know. So there is the productive, there is a mental challenge which everybody is facing right now. I think at uh, home, you know, there are uh, issues in terms of uh, people handling the work while handling the work, uh, you know, at home as well for with the large women population at PR. So I think that's something which everybody is facing. And uh, some, uh, what we tend to do is, uh, what I feel is important is that communication in terms of has to be, um, you know, purpose driven. And uh, there is a need for the trust, uh, you know, in the organization to build the trust and the empathy and the timely communication is very critical. Right. What, uh, like I think uh, Manisha and Pooja also mentioned, what uh, we have been doing at SPAG is, again, a couple of things trying to, be regular with uh, our, uh, you know, the uh, teams and in terms of holding the town halls, in terms of uh, having the uh, anonymous surveys, you know, they can come up with their questions or any concerns they had. So generally at times, you know, you've seen they might not open up like that and if they have any concerns. So yeah, there was an anonymous survey that we did, which was a big hit. And I think the kind of concerns we saw and the issues people are facing, which might not be so much related to work, which could be something, you know, with the negativity around and which is kind of uh, affecting their productivity. With, with that kind of mindset, I think people are uh, tend to lose a balance at times. So a lot of hand-holding uh, in terms of uh, having uh, containing their emotional balance and also hand-holding in terms of how to upskill them is very right. important. You know, in today's time, it's not just that what you have learned is going to be going forward. So it, you might have to add a skill, you might have to, um, you know, understand a deep dive into the campaigns or a deep dive into the client's uh, work or the industry, how it is going to be relevant in coming future. And again, talking about social media and digital is something which is uh, the thing going forward along with PR. PR definitely is a pace which has picked up. I think all of us know that the pace... Um, which, was, which has always been there with PR, but now PR is kind of steering the campaigns, the communication campaigns. It's no longer a support role. So having said that, I think it is uh, the added skill advantage that uh, all of us need to have. You know, it's not just probably the workforce that we have, it's all of us, even the team leaders, all of us need to understand whether understanding 
having uh, adding the empathy value to our uh, you know soft skill or adding a technical skill to our uh, you know so that is something which uh, will contain everyone and try we need to try and keep that positive mind uh, yeah encouraging each other connect keeping connected with the teams is very important not just because of not just for the work but i think even for um, in terms of uh, the social engagement that we talk about a lot of social distancing uh, has kind of taken a toll on people's i think uh, mind so yeah uh, you know staying at home not meeting people and then when you are talking to people it's mostly work like 10 to 12 hours a day and um, you're just talking work 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 you don't have the water cooler chats you don't have the gossip chats those are being missed out which were more like a vent out times for people so i think that that is something we need to figure out we need to be creative how do we help our people to do that even if it's in a fun way or even if it's in an anonymous way let them vent out venting out is very critical um so that is from my end yeah and when we talk about being effective like i said it is uh, uh, a challenging time yeah everybody all of us are um, facing that but again it is important to kind of keep that calm like uh, most of my colleagues over here said you know having a routine is very important and keeping calm is very important i know it's easier said than done but i think it's important to again like i'm saying communicate with your peers with your have faith in your organization have faith in your team leaders that's the time when everybody has to uh, stay strong and uh, you know uh, bond stronger so that's from my end right right thank you so much uh, shivani you almost uh, summed up uh, the entire uh, discussion that we are um, talking uh, about today so you know a couple of interesting things that um, i uh, jotted down during the conversation we had that uh, a lot was said and discussed on the kind of change in messaging uh, that has also happened right change in communication that has happened maybe uh, mediums have changed there has been uh, uh imp- more importance given to digital more importance being given to social uh, media etc and archana at the beginning of uh, the session you made a, a few couple of very interesting points there you mentioned a few brands you know um talking of brands and the kind of communication that you're helping them with uh, we have seen uh, brands uh, which are in the fmcg department or which are maybe you know um have products in the health and sanitation department for them communication and messaging have been very obvious they are saying what people need to hear at the moment but when then there are other brands like you mentioned the luxury car brand you know what is the kind of uh, communication that uh, they are sending across you know what is it uh, that they should be saying um, at the moment without uh, sounding insensitive but then again staying in touch with their uh, customers see this is a time at the moment we need to redefine the brand purpose every right. company needs to uh, think about that right uh, we need to infuse a lot more authenticity and humanness you know there is a need for empathy as uh, people spoke internally but even externally you know people expect that people want brands to contribute and help them ride this uh, you know crises right uh, so i mean some of the trends that we are seeing in the marketplaces is something that we need to uh, certainly embrace as part of our communication in which one sits for what you know it looks at it so suppose you're in the, you know your business is not e-commerce enabled it's a time to do that right so there's going to be a lot of communication that'll take place on that because there's going to be an accelerated shift towards digital shopping um the environment has become so much more relevant people are so conscious about social consciousness purpose uh you know so is there an element of social purpose that you can integrate into into your into your organization into your brand making it real remember authenticity is absolutely core you cannot walk uh, it's also where ethics today are more more important than ever aesthetics will be so please look at look at that is you know when you're crafting your messages when you're working on uh programs for your clients that becomes very well, that has to take center stage uh local pride what are you doing what are you contributing how is it that you can you know uh is there some some way that we can demonstrate that uh how is it that we can af- 
avoid inflaming local sensitivities. We've seen that in recent times, right? Um, um, what's going on at the moment with the banning of so many of these uh, Chinese uh, sort of apps. It's, it's all about local pride, right? This is an up, these are things that are happening contextually around us beyond COVID. And, and that's something that uh, has to be recognized. You, you have to underplay uh, 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 what is not local and overplay whatever local is. So how is your brand, your organization, your company contributing to growth in this market? Uh, maybe it's time to do some local collaborations quickly and so forth become more local, uh, put a local face to your company as opposed to uh, a, a global face. Uh, also, it's, it's a time that we feel there is a need for inclusion. Um, you know, Absolutely. it's very, it, it, you know, we are going to go through what is known, what I'd like to call is the minus one living, right? We're not going to be able to uh, generally spend at the levels that uh, we were accustomed to. And so all companies' products will have to sort of look at it, okay, say, what is my, what is that particular uh, product category or that uh, um, offering, that service that I can offer at a base level, which is inclusive, which can actually touch many more people. You know, right. those, are the, those are the some of the points that we need to, in, you know, include in, in our strategy going forward. Right, right. right. Tasme, Nandita, you want to add something there? Yes, I actually would. And you know, it's to your point, Tasme, where you said, you know, um, healthcare, uh, you know, it's, it's a given, they, you know, they don't have a problem. But, you know, we have an interesting situation where we work with a, a palliative care uh, NGO. And uh, a very, very critical aspect of healthcare but something that is just not getting attention. Uh, Absolutely. God attention and is not getting attention in these times. Mm -hmm. In addition to what Archana said, a very important element is that I think um, everyone is just, all of us, our clients, the entire in business is, is understanding the importance of stakeholder engagement. Uh, and that goes beyond, uh, you know, uh, a, a large part of what we really are known to do, which is, uh, media relations or digital engagement. Stakeholder engagement is now sitting at the heart of uh, public relations now. And I, you know, I can, I can tell that so many of us are now actually using the power of digital engagement or media relations to actually bring stakeholder engagement very, very close to what clients need to serve their business objectives. Right. Uh, so you, we find ourselves, you know, if you're not able to break through the, 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 the kind of um, the trend or the narrative that media is, is, is right now focusing when it comes to COVID, which is all about, you know, hospitals and beds and, right. uh, you know, uh, uh, positive cases or deaths, et cetera, et cetera. And that occasional doctor's day or nurse's day thrown into, you know, kind of uh, talk about compassion and care, even to the uh, medical fraternity. Uh, we are saying it does not matter if we don't get visibility. What we want is to be heard. And that heard may not necessarily translate into visibility, but we want our message to get to the right stakeholders. So are we engaging with the PHFIs of the world? Are we engaging with the WHOs of the world? Are we engaging with the ministries? Are we, you know, are we engaging with hospitals? Are we engaged? How are we engaging with society? You know, and so all our campaigns are driven. Yes, the tools that we use maybe, you know, or we may be directly interacting. But I think stakeholder engagement has been brought to the heart and center of public relations now. And it's direct stakeholder engagement. I would agree with Nandita. I think the 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 challenge is how how networked are you and how can you bring exactly. that to your client and how can you make that transition for them from the little things that they were doing in their small isolated pockets to being able to actually network enough to make sure you present them in the right in the in front of the right stakeholders um, so i think uh, uh, i i support a lot what nandita is saying and and direct outreach it's not just using media or digital or you know videos or whatever it's about how how can you bring that or make that additional um, effort to be able to bring that network or bring that relationship 
uh, to the brand and grow their own networks and relationships to be more successful mm -hmm. at the businesses that they do. So I think um, that's really what is at the heart of a lot of the, the, the PR work that we are seeing. And it's not just from one person in the organization. I think there's an expectation for every uh, senior person, every team head, every um, you know, a practice lead or whoever we have to have that access, to have that understanding, to reach out and be able to uh, uh, understand the business uh, needs to be able to survive and give them, uh, or, or to be able to be more relevant to their business at this point in time. So networks, influencers, access is very critical, more so than just pure play media and digital, which is secondary actually to a lot right. of the things that right. we do. Uh, Manisha, if you would want to add into that. Yeah, so in continuation to what Archana mentioned that, you know, brands need to show support to the community. So I would like to share one example of a WhatsApp that I had received two days back. I'm not going to name a brand. So this is a shirt a company that basically advertises. So they circulated a WhatsApp group, a WhatsApp message that if you wear, if you're going to buy their shirt, definitely you're not 99% you are, you will be COVID free. So it is very important for the brands to understand that it is not the time for selling. This Absolutely. is time to showcase the support to the community as well as your stakeholders. You're answerable to all of your internal and internal, internal and external stakeholders. So right now it is very important to have positive purpose based, honest and transport, transparent approach to all our communication strategy. Right. So, you know, in our organization also, we are, putting a lot of emphasis on the right usage of language and appropriate tone because we don't want to, we want to be sensitive towards consumer sentiment because everyone is going through a very tough phase in their life. So yeah, so uh, uh, it's very important to keep showing your support towards community and stakeholders. If you are there with your consumers at this point of time, you're definitely going to be remembered for a very long, uh, you know, period. So yeah, this is just I wanted to add. I want to add, picking up from what Manisha sure. spoke about, you know, the other big responsibility we have as communicators, and if I may say custodians of the reputation of our clients and our brands, is actually to advise them when not to say something. I think that's Absolutely. becoming another very important role that we have to take on as advisors. And sometimes I have to say it uh, could be at the cost of... <laughs> You know, saying, telling the client, no, this is the wrong thing to do. And uh, we have to have, uh, I keep telling my teams, the courage to push back and, of course, do it with the right kind of rational and all that. But uh, fake news, wrong kind of, uh, you know, uh, making, um, sort, of, sort of saying that, I mean, the example that Manisha took, I mean, it, it just would not hold up to any kind of scrutiny. So those are, again, the additional responsibilities as we as communicators and senior advisors have to brands. And I think uh, in the last three months, I've seen a lot more of that. And we call it under the space of, you know, issues and crisis communication. And a lot of work has also happened in that space. Almost, I can say, uh, 60 to 70 percent of our clients have come to us in that space, invariably saying, OK, this kind of issue is growing. So whether it's an employee issue whether it's a policy issue, whether it's a partner distribution chain issue, it could be in any one of these areas. So even what Nandita was saying for the multi-stakeholder program, and because we help the organizations address all these stakeholders, looking at each one of these areas and seeing where could the next possible issue arise has become another very important part of our role with our clients. So we call it the scenario mapping because um, as much as possible, while nobody can predict what's going to happen in the next one month Absolutely. and where we are going with COVID, but it's important for us to at least start looking at the various scenarios that could hit our business. And mm -hmm. then how do we as communicators help our clients deal with those and be prepared right. in the best manner possible. Right. Right, right. So, we, so somebody was, uh, Shivani, yeah. yes, please. Sorry. Yeah. So in fact, uh, the couple of points, you know, of course, the whole thing comes to like being purpose driven, you know, how the organizations and the brands need to be purpose driven and understand the sentiment of um, the customer or the end client. 
so which is uh, again a very interesting example that um, i came across yesterday was this nutritionist celebrity nutritionist he's uh, lu cotino and uh, he just uh, released his book on immunity um, you know immunity pill with chilpa shetty apparently he is uh, not selling it and it's free to download so see somebody like him could just easily sell the book and make money out of it this is the time he wanted to win the you know his uh, customers and his clients so i think this is something very interesting and it was a very uh, good pr that he did for himself you know right yes. so that's something i think what uh, the empathy and building trust is what is critical now right 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 Right. So uh, we have a lot of questions coming in from uh, everybody who's uh, tuned into the several platforms from where we are live. Uh, but before that, I would just ask one conclusive question, and I'll, I'll go to each one of you to answer that for us. Which is, you know, your message to the community out there. And we'll uh, start in the order that we uh, started the entire discussion. Achana, if we can um, have uh, your take on, you know, your message to the community out there. I think it's time that I, I'm going to pluck a leaf out of something my colleague uh, Shreya spoke uh, at the right. PRCI conference, a PRCI sort of platform on for you know the program that they're running support each other, and she says you know remember the acronym COPE. So this is a time that we must communicate even at the risk of over communicating uh, mm -hmm. with people, uh, clients, loved ones, don't elderly. Everybody, uh, it's yes. important. Uh, we must remain optimistic. Um, let's not lose hope. Um, we shall. This too shall pass, right? Absolutely. Uh, let's not overlook productivity, mm -hmm. um, because, uh, like we've all, somebody was speaking about work-life balance, right? Anandita, you did, right? I, I believe it's work-life harmony. Um, it's, uh, you know. We are what we are. We have a life because we work. Uh, so yes, productivity cannot slacken at this point. And, and empathy. Uh, let's be empathetic towards others. If somebody else is not feeling the way they you are, uh, um, let's let's be let's be kind. Right. Right. Deep Shikha. So for me, it's about where creativity has to solve a problem. Always, and the second part is whatever messages we are putting out there, please be genuine about them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of my colleagues have talked and echoed that. So genuineness in your messaging, and the third one is um, similar to what Arjuna talked about: empathy, empathy for each other as human beings first. It's not just our people, but our clients, uh, people we talk to, the media, whoever. Uh, we right. must have empathy towards them and see that you know everybody is going through a tough time. Absolutely, there will be mistakes made. Forgive and look at it as a learning. Right, uh, Valerie, your message. I think um, uh, this is the time when you can just be very innovative. Uh, you can you you have the opportunity to bring your uh, hidden talents and skills to the forefront. You have the opportunity to revamp yourself. I think. Uh, it's given us a great opportunity to, you know, look at things very differently. So take the risk, um, do things differently, uh, because like uh, everybody else said, because there's a little bit more empathy in the market. So you make a mistake and you're okay. At least you've taken the risk to do something um, uh, different. And uh, don't lose that uh, hope. I think everyone's feeling very hopeless where they are right now and feeling you know, really bogged down with uh, being locked down and having all these home, uh, you know, suddenly you're, you're having home issues at the same time merged with your work issues. Not many people are like uh, Nandita and uh, Arjuna and uh, <laughs> some of us who merge all of that together. Some of them like to keep it separate. So don't lose hope. We're getting there. It's, uh, it's only at the end of the corner, I think. And by December, we'll be there. <laughs> so don't lose hope stay positive and uh, take your chances don't okay another thing is don't lose this time because you have a lot of opportunity or time to learn something new like you would spend one and a half hour i mean at least in bombay we spend one and a half hour going to work and coming back and 
um, you know, that that's three hours in the day. And I think that gives you some amount of time to learn a new skill or open your mind to doing something a little bit different because uh, the future is going to be a bit different. And we are all seeing it. It's, it's right there in front of every one of us. And if you don't use this time to uh, open your eyes, see new things, uh, learn and revamp yourself, then you're wasting this uh, precious time where you've got to be with your uh, self at home. So yeah, that's that's all from my side. Rashmi, your, your message to the community out there. Well, I think we've all uh, seen a lot of change and very uh, rapidly. So, you know, and we've seen, you know, we've talked a lot about it today, about employee first uh, engagements. We've talked about executive communications. We've talked about crisis, purposeful leadership purposeful uh, communications, reaching consumers in new ways. So everyone, I think, has been working very hard. Um, and I think over the past months, we have been working with a lot of rapid fire ways, um, especially with the crisis response. But my message is that is now evolving into, you know, future readiness. So we have to now start focusing on reinventing, you know, on recovery. And we can do this, you know, with more relatable, uh, more respectful, more empathetic communications. And, and I think the one thing that this lockdown has taught us all is the value of work-life balance. So as we, you know, are moving forward and hopefully into the recovery phase, um, let's not lose that. That's all from my end. Right, right. Manisha, uh, please add it to that. So my message to community is that please take care of your family. Follow government orders. If government wants you to wear masks, then please wear masks. Don't step out without your mask. As Valerie said, stay positive and do take care of your health. If you are healthy, you will be able to do many other things which and you will, will remain strong, which is needed during this time. And uh, keep saying to yourself, all is well. 2020 is going to end soon. Yeah, right, right, right. So, you know, I was uh, reading a WhatsApp message yesterday which said that, you know, there's a good news and there's a bad news. The good news being that half of 2020 is over and the bad news also being that uh, half of 2020 is over. So, you know, that's uh, a very valid thing to say. Uh, Pooja, what is your message to the community out there? I think uh, the first thing is that, you know, people should be grateful. So I right. think practice gratitude is the most important thing. At least we are in a far, far better position than many others out there. So I think we invoke that feeling of being grateful. I think this is what we can at least pass it on to many others that at least you are in a much, much better position as compared to whoever others are. And second thing is that people also need to build up on the AQ. AQ is adversity quotient. So adversity quotient is that if you are in today's time, if you're able to pass on this rough patch without losing your mind, I think you are, you have safely crossed this bridge. So I think these are small things that I think if we are small, small things by doing positive affirmations, if we are able to tell ourselves and I think tell many others, then create that positive sentiment. I think people need positive sentiment more than anything else today. And I think if the audience can bring it out, for people and our colleagues. And I think uh, this is how the sentiment building can be done. So build up on your AQ and be grateful. That's the message from my side. Yeah. Nandita, what is the message from your side? We've I learned about the said. rhythm. Tell us more. I love what you said, Pooja, the AQ. Really, really like that. I think crisis is a big leveler. Um, you know, um, I mean, today with like, who cares whether you have three decades of experience or just one? Right. I mean, <laughs> we're all looking for the same solutions. We're all seeking solutions in a time like this. Um, I spoke about the rhythm. So there is there is a rhythm in all of us. Just spend that little time in acknowledging that and then building on that rhythm. And, you know, gratitude. Uh, I think in all this um, noise about what we've lost, I think we still have plenty with us. So um, and I think it's important to accept, acknowledge, accept and stop resisting uh, what we're going through. So, Shivani, your message. 
I think I would just uh, like to add to all of uh, everybody's almost covered everything. But yeah, it's uh, one important thing is that uh, it's okay not to be okay. Um, you know, at times I think uh, all of us uh, get too harsh on ourselves. You know, why this has not happened? Why that is not happening? Why the other person? So I think it's important to understand that for ourselves and for the others as well. Like it is okay that fine, it's not happened and it's going to take some time to happen. It is uh, very important to be sensitive towards each other. And yes, uh, to the youngsters out there, you know, I keep hearing that people have started to venture out too fast and to, you know, explore things too soon. So I think it's important to stay safe and stay at home. Uh, that's why work from home thing is still on, that you should not venture out and, um, you know, put yourself at risk. It's important to take care of yourself. Right, right. One point, since we're an all sure, sure, family, well, we're yes. assuming that there are lots of women watching, don't forget to take your D3 and your B12s <laughs> because <laughs> you are dropping sitting at home. So I I think all of us have to do that. And <laughs> some zinc. <laughs> and some zinc Lucky. and some vitamin C. Don't forget all of that. It has yes, to be all around. Absolutely. Around. True, true. <laughs> also, absolutely. I think, um, you know, I keep hearing from younger lot, we don't get time to work out. We don't get time to do this. I think planning and structuring your day is in your hand. If yeah. it that, you cannot manage it during the day. Get up at 5, 5.30 in the morning yeah. and do I think it's all up to you how and what you want for yourself and for your from your life. So it's nobody who can guide you for uh, that. And if you can't manage now, then when will you manage? 24 hours? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, you know, we have um, someone here in the audience, uh, Anup Sharma from the Storytellers, who's saying that there's a lot of men watching uh, this panel discussion too. And he asks us that, you know, what is the secret and how do you keep smiling like all of us in the panel? So any of you want to take that question? <laughs> just so that's a question to be answered. You can please yeah. answer it. Yeah, so we'll just you'll learn it. Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah. wait. <laughs> I think Anu yes. knows uh, everyone in terms of, um, and he's the one probably who like a storyteller. So he creates stories <laughs> and he builds stories, and we understand and we keep smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we're just living in the moment. We're just enjoying the company of all our colleagues and we've got this one hour and we're just focused on this one hour. So Right, right. Exactly. This is more again like a, I think an interaction like this is more like a stress buster for all of us and you know more like a, it is, since we are again like not meeting and there's social distancing this seems like a chit chat woman chit chat session. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll go to the questions we have here. Uh, someone says, hello, what is the skill that the new entrants should inculcate as they enter the industry now in the post-COVID world? Uh, it's open to any of you. Any of you can take it up. Well, I think that um, uh, telling a story is very key to PR. You have to and, and, and to tell the story in a way, not just with the facts. The facts have to be right. So there's a lot of emphasis on factual accuracy, but how are you going to tell that story to emotionally connect? Because ultimately people don't remember, the one thing that people remember the most is how did you make them feel? So, so, so it's, it's, and storytelling is, is an art, it's also a science. So if you can bring that together, you're set up for success. And if I can add to Rashmi's, uh, so storytelling has, of course, been a very, very important skill for us as communicators always. In terms of adding a new twist to it would be tell that story digitally now. <laughs> Figure out, wow. don't wait for somebody to make that film for you. You have to know how to do it. Do the script, shoot the damn video, edit it and put it out there all within some 48 hours or something. So yeah, as, so as a new entrant, they have to really learn the craft of storytelling. And fortunately or unfortunately, when we started out, it was all about reading, writing, right? And, and right. sending it in print. Uh, even if it was broadcast, it was really channeling it through a great pitch note. But I think now the times have changed. So as a new entrant, if you don't know Adobe, you don't know 
how to make that video. You don't know how to craft that story. Like Rashmi said, how do you make people feel emotively through that visual connection? You, 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 you'll be lost. So uh, that's your skill that you have to have. And I think every one of us will be looking for those uh, when we hire the next round uh, of people coming in. So I think right. it's content creation through, um, you know, digital content creation. Basically. Absolutely. How are you able to tell a story? That's important. Yeah. Uh, the next question um, is uh, asked that what have been the key learnings for agencies in the last 100 days? I think we've covered that more or less through uh, the panel. But if anybody still wants to sum it up uh, for our uh, viewers. I think the use of data and tools have really uh, ramped up. I mean, a lot of people used to never use digital tools or tools to listen and craft their stories. And I've seen that in the last 100 days, more so than ever, everyone's been saying, oh my God, this tool has been a lifesaver. I've been able to monitor match conversations and be part of the news cycle. So I think um, that's something that has really, uh, you know, clients are also looking at it from a very different way. Who, who would not invest in such tools are suddenly looking at, hey, what do I need to do to invest? Because again, like I said, the CEO's attention is on what you're doing from a comms perspective, how you're making that difference. And they're saying, show it to me in data and numbers and not just column centimeter share of voice. I need to know trends. I need to understand uh, stories. I need to understand what we're doing to be part of that uh, new cycle. So I think are, you know, we've, we've actually ramped up that quite effectively to use data and tools to uh, effectively uh, look at predictive, creative and storytelling. Right, right. And also, you know, just to add to what Valerie was saying, the other thing, you know, we talked a lot about internal communications, but um, just, you know, a few months ago, our focus was on e-newsletters and internet and intranet posts and, you know, Things have changed. Town halls and, and fireside chats, which were bringing everyone together in person in large crowds, are now uh, <clears throat> things of the past. So, but at the same time, can, we need to create more personalized messaging. Um, and, you know, we need to communicate with um, more frequently, with a great, greater transparency with the employees. In fact, I was talking to one of my colleagues just a few days ago and she was saying, you know, one of the biggest changes in strategies and channels has actually happened in internal communications because that is where um, the big opportunities are. So um, I was like, well, you know, give me an example. And, you know, she said, for example, employee podcasts. You know, we've always looked at podcasts as external um, uh, messaging tools, but now they're being used more and more um, frequently internally because employees can, you know, feel like they're talking to their executives. They're talking to the executives more often. They're aware of their anxieties. Um, and also, you know, being able to relate in a more uh, informal and uh, conversational way. So, so internal comms is, again, a big area of change and innovation. Nandita, I think you wanted to add in something. I think, um, I think the, the biggest learning really has been uh, the unraveling of public relations as a discipline. And it goes beyond media relations or digital engagement now. It is all about, as Valerie put it, data-based insights and strategy. It's about messaging and therefore good story, good effective storytelling. It's about stakeholder engagement. It's about um, you know, uh, community management. I think, you know, and, and if um, I think, and this is, this is a message to, uh, if I could be, uh, you know, um, a bit blase about it to all our Copcom and marketing people listening out there. Uh, if you're getting your PR firm to do only media relations and focusing on AVE and the like, uh, dig a little deeper because um, I think this, the power of public relations goes a lot, lot deeper. And the last few months or 100 days has really shown that. Right. right. Uh, next question is from uh, Ruhel. He asks, uh, how do you see role of women entrepreneurs in the PR sector in the next couple of years? Any of you can take that question. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I hope to see it grow and have a lot more gender parity. And I would like to see 
more and more uh, women leaders in um, in boardrooms, and hopefully uh, that's uh, that's coming in soon. Right. Anyone yeah, think, wants to add yeah, into that? Uh, yes. While his question may have been specific for women entrepreneurs, but I think, like Rashmi said, it's uh, it's a b bigger, broader base of more women in leadership overall, Absolutely. not just in communication, but also in business. And I, I think all of us over here are probably already doing, and if not, we should be doing much more to bring up, bring in women who can deal with leadership. And, you know, we've, some things we've talked about here in terms of the work-life harmony. And these are typically the challenges the young women in our industry have. And I have to tell you anecdotally of um, some stories from very young women in my organization struggling to keep up with work and home and actually saying that I don't think I can continue working because the, the pressures at home are so much more right now. I can't cope right. with it. Right. And I think that's where us as women leaders have to understand that and step in and enable them to understand how do you balance it out? How can we give you the kind of space you require? How do you manage your time to counsel them? Because the easiest or the saddest thing would be for them to just give up and say, forget it. I'm out of the workforce. Right. Uh, let me see what else I can do in the meanwhile. So yes, for more women leaders and for us to mentor the next Absolutely. generation to come. Absolutely. Uh, there is another question that says that since business continuity and communication planning are interlinked, what long-term and short-term implications will this pandemic have on the corporates and agencies? Anyone? Uh, Archana, you want to take uh, this question? I, I don't understand the question. So I'm finding it very difficult to respond. To Anybody it. else wants to uh, uh, hmm. take the question? Could you repeat the question? Tasmin? Yes, sure, sure. The question goes, since business continuity and communication planning are interlinked, what long-term and short-term implications will the pandemic have on corporates and agencies? Well, I mean, I can try and take a stab at this, and I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but mm -hmm. um, so from the corporate perspective, <clears throat> this is the time to really reprioritize because we're coming out of a very challenging, uh, a very challenging situation. And um, it's going to be a tough market. This, you know, we saw so much content just around focused on one issue, the pandemic. So businesses have to figure out, well, how are we going to cut through all of this and, you know, and, and get to our audience to get them to, to hear what we have to say wow. now. Um, and I would imagine that, uh, you know, PR agencies and businesses are equal partners in this. So um, when the business are setting the PR, uh, the, the business priorities, the key priorities, one would, it would directly impact the agency because they are supporting um, the communications uh, for these for, for these priorities. So um, I hope that answers the question. Right, right. Uh, then there is another question that says that how long will the agents for how long will the agencies have virtual offices? Yeah. Anybody wants to? There's no norm moving forward. I think I hope we can have virtual offices, but yeah. um, <laughs> you know, as long as we have, uh, we look at the safety of our people. We look at uh, it being okay for them to come and interact with one another. It being okay. I think till that time, uh, most of us would not want to allow or put our people at risk. So uh, I think it will be some time since right. we, we, we will be working remotely. And uh, why not? I mean, it's been, we've been very efficient uh, working remotely. Uh, it saves us on some rent. It saves us on some, uh, you know, overhead costs at the moment. So let's go for it. But eventually, yes, we all like that personal interaction and we all want to be together. So uh, it will come but uh, it will it will come when it's absolutely safe for our people to come together to work. Absolutely. We second that. I personally think uh, 
we are going to reach some kind of a middle path of yeah. this virtual and yeah. in yeah. office space mm-hmm. because i think i i That's doubt if we will go back to the completely all in office yeah. options yeah. Yeah. because like valerie said i think everybody knows you also realize the benefits of the remote managed working and there are cost elements and so on so we are clearly looking at some kind of a middle road on this one and that's going to be the new normal and i also think we've been shying away from this because of the responsibility we were always worried that the people would be more responsible at you know doing stuff from where they are and we we offered work from home but we would always be very like hesitant about is that person really doing what they're supposed to do yeah. And, yeah. but now i think um, it's a pro it's a proven model right people are more responsible you're seeing that you're seeing people like nandita mentioned i think earlier people are coming ahead to be more you know engaged and it's forming some sort of a rhythm which uh, which all of us uh, will continue to follow through and if we do continue to follow through i don't see us moving out of this uh, you know fully uh, in a sense and the clients are happy with the virtual meetings now what yeah. they i i i hope so you know otherwise you spend half <laughs> your time on a aircraft with your bag running around from exactly. the other i'm so <laughs> glad i'm so glad that so <laughs> Second, Second that. that I think it will also bring back a lot of women yes. back into the workforce across the globe. Yes, yes. I agree. Yes, that's a very relevant point. Careers yes. because uh, they have to look after family. I think a lot of organizations don't welcome that. Uh, don't welcome the fact that you know give them the flexibility to sort of right. work from home. And 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 I think. Uh, to answer that earlier question you will see a lot more women therefore then climb up the corporate ladder and absolutely in much more senior positions so which they have uh, otherwise had to sort of take a back seat yeah you know uh, one of our clients uh, an automotive client did a study and said uh, let's look at the employees on what they'd expect and what what would be hindrances for them to come back to work and the one big thing is since until school start uh people are going to be very hesitant because their kids are at home there are no maids to come uh look after them they care is not going to be the same any longer so i think there's going to be even your male colleagues it's not just uh women colleagues they will have to be home and support uh either or to be able to look after the kids and and have that education from school so that's a big that's a big area of concern and a lot of young couples uh, who are in nuclear families not having help of you know uh, uh, your in-laws or parents or yeah. whatever so i think that's going to be a big concern uh, and they said that that was the biggest hindrance for people to actually come back uh, to work it's not about the public transportation it was not about you know uh, it's about you know how am i going to manage my kids if they're not going to go to school absolutely and with no maid i think even with the i've seen a lot of joint families i think expectations from a woman to kind of take care while she's sitting at home to take care of the home you know and yeah, uh, yeah so this is what you know a lot of people are facing right now so while they have to be uh, at the calls and they are expected to kind of take care of the household thing as well so yeah those challenges are there but yeah, like all of us are saying this too shall pass and people I'll will have to share the load <laughs> <laughs> and people are going to come back with a bang once they overcome all of this aq <laughs> absolutely so uh, this is one of the last questions uh, that we have we have just two more questions left um, this is from mukesh karbanda his question he uh, says that any of the panelists can take this question how much time before we start pushing the paddle on sales slash hardcore product promotion again since most brands are ble- bleeding revenues yeah um so i'll start um sure i want to add here that economy is slowly opening up so right. it's still not right time you know for to actively start you know uh, having the sale uh, directly sale campaigns for brand we have to be little patient absolutely we have and we have to continue with our purpose based and you know positive and interact positive and uh, you know transparent communication approach i think consumers are not looking for any sales you know selling sales uh, you know uh, advertisement right now if right. you spreading uh, the message of uh, show and uh, if you spreading the message of care and support to the consumers that's enough 
uh, you know, for the right. I have a bit of a different view. I think uh, the point is, do you have a relevant sales point? Do you have a relevant sales message? If you're going to be relevant in the current time and space and you're genuine about what the benefits of your product are and how it can help the person, uh, you should be doing that communication. I, I think there are many and more, whether you take uh, IT products, whether you take FMCG food products, whether you take personal care products, all of them are very much required today. So I don't think you should shy away from saying, oh, am I going to put a sales message? Uh, yeah. Even in a non-COVID time, you, nobody wants to be sold a product. They need to know why should I buy the product? What's in it for me? What is the unmet need that this product is going to fulfill for me? So it has to be relevant and it has to be genuine. You should be out there at the end of the day business needs to start it needs Actually, to continue think, for us to go on i think he's yes, asking us, when will sales start again i think uh, yeah. if you see most of your clients and some of you may handle some sort of it businesses most of the businesses are going through a digital transformation and they've also said you know there's this joke floating around who's helped you uh, you know transition your business uh, to a, a digital transformation of business was it your ceo or your cto but it was actually covid moved businesses to actually transition their their ways of which they're looking at go to cu customer and even uh, you know uh, automotive brands are now transitioning to sell online and move from purely dealerships to actually an online mode people are offering uh, direct to home test drives and things like that so it, business is transforming with the time and with that transformation you'll see sales pick up uh, as well. So uh, if you're able to be more relevant from a, like Deepshika said, from a business standpoint to, to transform your business to meet that, uh, uh, that, that gap or that purpose of what you as a brand stand for, then sure, why not? And I, and I'm, and we're seeing that happen. So a lot of, a lot of brands are really looking at now, if you do look at transformation, we we'll use the next six months for transformation. What is 2021 looking like? How are we going to leverage the opportunity that 21, 2021 is sitting? And in fact, a lot of our clients are looking at, hey, let's look at what we are planning for 2021 from a, from a strategy standpoint. Because right. you know, right. 2020 is like almost, uh, uh, let's, let's ride the flow and see where this takes us. It's a skip year. 2020, the skip year. Uh, I'm, I'm refusing. I'm not celebrating my birthday this year. I lost. <laughs> Except for birthday celebrations, it's a skip. No, oh, I, I want to give back. <laughs> I'm not right. So uh, we will take just one last question and this is my request to all of our listeners and viewers who have joined us on this panel that you know the conversation doesn't stop here. We've just discussed that how work doesn't stop at any particular given hour. So you know conversation and the chatter doesn't stop with this webinar. You can take your questions on our uh, Twitter, Facebook pages and you can uh, ask our speakers whatever you have to ask them. So this is just one last question that I will take this uh, it is from Madhavini Sareen. Uh, she says, thank you so much for such an informative uh, session. My question is to Arjuna, ma'am. In these COVID times, a global traveler is now a local shopper. Traveling was earlier associated with buying for products in their country of origin, making them authentic. Travel restrictions have changed that now, impacting the luxury industry. What, according to you, is an immediate priority for the luxury industry to cater to a situation like this? Quite a question, Achana. This is yeah. <laughs> Actually, I did reply back to her privately. I did think this we had time because I don't know. I was under the conception that it was only till four o'clock. Uh, so essentially, see what's happening with luxury brands and 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 what we are, uh, you know, with all the brands that we represent also. Um, we all read about the the revenge buying that uh, China witnessed with Hermes yes. and all that. Now we won't see it. You know, in India, we'll never experience it like to that scale. But there certainly is a desire. There's a latent demand that is sitting already. You know, people are there's a pent up demand to just sort of indulge yourself. You know, where you haven't had a holiday this year. All of summer's gone, and you haven't had a, a, a you know a time that I think every one of us take a short break. We have, we, we've got that money. You're feeling down and out. What do you do? You go, ladies go and shop, men go and shop. 
So weddings are taking place, etc. is taking place. So luxury buying is definitely going to hold. The only thing that will happen is probably it won't be uh, people will be hesitant in buying the tens of lakhs of a sort of product. They will probably be happier buying something which is a slightly more economical. Mm-hmm. So brands will have to stock up at the lower end, stack up at that level as opposed to at the top end. Uh, a lot of luxury brands are not e-enabled. So they have to uh, quickly get their businesses e-enabled. Uh, personal shopping, which is a trend that uh, is 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 very popular amongst luxury brands. Well, the watches and the uh, clothes and if your bags come to your home. Uh, right. Literally. That bit will is also something that people are reticent about. But if you could see it online, it will just enable the business. So right. I think it's, it's because you cannot travel overseas, there's a great market for luxury in this market. Now, all the brands that you would otherwise have said, okay, even from, you know, like my Nespresso coffee pods, I, I can't go. Where can I buy them? I have to look for them here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Otherwise, that was your first port of call when you went in anywhere. Okay. Please tell me where you found a place to get Nespresso pods. I'm going to message you. <laughs> Amazon. Amazon. <Getting> Amazon. <laughs> um, so, you know, so there's, a, there's a place for luxury. There's, uh, very soon, we're going to be traveling within the country. Goa's just opened up. Uh, so, I mean, the point is boutique hotels, etc. All of that will happen. You know, people will go away. People will take a short drive once borders start opening between states. And so local luxury products will definitely flourish. But international brands, make yourself available across the board on, e- on e-commerce. Uh, you'll find enough shoppers. All of them have moved to making masks as well right now, right? Yes, Sanitizer, yeah. masks, yes. uh, display, you know, sanitization uh, stuff in your kit. So it's all, they've all uh, revamped to make themselves relevant right now. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. I'm contributing. Yeah. You, Achana, your mic is switched yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm contributing to the welfare of people, you know, at large. Yeah. They've all done their bit, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Even the biggest of brands have contributed. Absolutely. Not just in mask making, but actual physical Absolutely. fundraising. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I guess that is it. And it was a very, very interesting session and fantastic to have uh, all the women leaders on board. And, Thank you, everyone. Uh, Karan couldn't have us uh, chatting up for any longer. He's here. Uh, he had to so, budget. it. That's when we knew yes. the time was up. <laughs> yeah. Over to you, everyone. Karan. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking out time, enlightening our audience. We have a wonderful session. I wish we could have continued for a longer time, but unfortunately, this is it. So we will continue the momentum. We are doing a Women Achievers Summit and Awards on 29th of July. I'm going to reach out to you individually. Look forward to see your engagement there as well. So thank you once again. I hope you like the session. If you have any suggestions, feedback, please do feel free to write into me or anybody in the Exchange for Media team. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.